One. I thought it would be harder than it was, honestly. I'd only been at that restaurant for five months, and I've never given up a job earlier than a year in. I would have kept at it but for one manager. This woman was always crabby. Sometimes, rarely, you could talk to her without her snapping at you. But mostly, needing to ask her a question, or even worse, telling her you made a mistake with a table, was majorly anxiety-inducing. The major incidents were... My aunt died a couple months ago, and I still came in to work the day I found out, even though I was a wreck because it was Friday night and they always need all hands on deck. She at least recognized that I was pretty messed up and promised to get me out early, and then made sure I didn't leave until the only other servers still there were the closers. I sprained my wrist a few weeks ago and had to start wearing a brace for it, yay, cheapest healthcare I can afford, and didn't take any days off work to let it heal because I really needed the money. It was pretty obvious I could only carry heavy plates with my good hand, and only small ones with my bad one, and she still kept stuffing heavy plates into my hand and yelling at me when I tried to refuse. The last month, every Friday I've been scheduled on the indoor patio. The restaurant is attached to a mall, and made almost no money. Line out the door, two-page wait list, and I made no more than 40 bucks every Friday because no one wants to sit on the patio. Then, two weeks ago, she wrote me up. In eight years, I've never been written up for anything. I was one of three servers who opened the restaurant Sunday. The worst day to open, because the Saturday closers never do what they're supposed to do. The dividers for the line were nowhere to be found, so we just arranged the lines as best we could without them. We had no clean coffee pots or tea urns, and no sanitizer buckets. And on Sundays, the dishwasher doesn't come in until we open so we couldn't do anything but set up the patio and wait. By the time the dishwasher got there and we finally got clean sani buckets, we were busy and the manager had one of the new servers fill them. Turns out they got filled with the wrong chemical and she was pissed. After the shift was over, she wrote up all three openers for not properly setting up the line, not making tea and coffee before we opened, and not filling the sani buckets properly, all things we literally were unable to do. We could have if we'd had a dishwasher when we were there, instead of an hour later when we opened. Which multiple people have complained about. But she's never done anything about it, even though she makes the schedule. So tonight after my shift, I caught a different manager, a really awesome one, and told him I couldn't do it anymore. I'm amazed by how calm I was at the time, because I'm shaking now. But he told me lots of people have similar complaints about her. Turns out she's leaving in a few months and giving the restaurant over to him. And he said if I want to come back then, he'll take me back in a heartbeat. I don't think I want to go back to serving at all. It's been eight years and while waiting tables alone has not caused my poor mental health, it's certainly contributed to it. I'm in grad school, and I think it's finally time to try and get experience for my degree. So last week I started putting in applications at offices instead of at restaurants. I have an interview next Tuesday, and I really hope it goes well. At least, if that doesn't work out, I have a guaranteed serving job to go back to in four months. 2. I work at a high-volume restaurant on a very touristy street in New Orleans. Tonight was Halloween, so I could sit here and tell y'all some serious customer buffoonery, tomfoolery and straight ridiculousness from this evening. But instead, I'm gonna tell y'all about how my dick nearly burned off. First, my chef has this bottle of hot sauce that is equal to 337,000 Scovels. In layman's terms, that shit is fucking spicy as fuck. We sometimes taste a toothpick full to help us wake up or if we're bored. We once had to send a server home puking after taking a swig of it. So this is serious stuff. Well, I have a lady at my table that asks for a hot sauce spicier than our Crystal's hot sauce we have on the table. I gave her a spicy Tabasco. But she still says it's not that spicy. So I mention our insane hot sauce, and give her a very serious warning about it. She says she wants to try it anyway, so I bring it out and pour just a touch into a ramekin for her. She ends up loving it, but that's not the fun part. So I get a new table, I decide to go piss real quick because we're starting to get busy, I head into the restroom. Mind you, I'm dressed up in an extensive costume that isn't easy to take off, 
So I forced to pull my dick over this weird zipper on the bottom. Important because I had to handle my member more than usual. A minute later, I'm in the server station starting to make waters. When all of a sudden, my dick feels really warm. I kind of adjust my costume thinking maybe it is too tight, but it's only getting worse. My friend Vic sees me adjusting and asks if I'm good. I kind of brush him off and say it's nothing. He begins to make waters too. When this warmth in my crotch turns to fire, he sees me jump back a bit. You alright, bud? Dude, I don't know. My dick is starting to burn and I don't know why. I say, I'm still trying to make waters and ignore the burn. You look pale as fuck. Want me to check on 24? The burn is intensifying. No, I've got it! Water is in hand. I take two steps forward and suddenly my dick is covered in hellfire. I drop the waters to the ground and look at Vic. I can feel the flop sweat on my face. Dude, what is wrong? My dick is on fire! Check on 24! I go run to the bathroom and inspect my penis. His bright red and the tip almost looks purple. I try wiping it off with water and it's only getting worse. Now, I'm wondering if instant onset gonorrhea is a thing and panicking as I'm imagining the possibilities. I zip back up and run into the kitchen. I look at my GM. Hey, I've got to go to the hospital or something. I don't know why, but my dick is burning like crazy. I tell him, almost crying. Didn't you handle Chef's hot sauce earlier? He asks. Then it all comes together in my head. All I did was literally touch the bottle and that was enough. I run back into the bathroom and Vic follows me in. He ends up bringing me a cup of milk and it doesn't instantly solve it, but it helped a lot. After about 10 minutes of dick dunking, I return to my tables and tell them everything. They all laugh. I got a bunch of sympathy tips. And now I have the colorful nickname of Firecrotch at my job. Still a happy ending if you ask me. Hope y'all had a fruitful Halloween. 3. I was working for a corporate restaurant known for pizza and having the name of a state in their title. This was in Orange County, California. I think it was a Tuesday and I was closing server. It was so dead we were out of sight work. I think I was actually polishing the tins we used for creamer because the shift manager couldn't come up with anything else for me to do. The rest of the floor had been cut hours before. It was just me and the bartender. My total sales were less than $200. All I could think about was getting a cold beer in 10 minutes after we finally locked the doors. And then, as I'm sure you can guess, a group of eight walked in and stood semi-patiently at the host stand. The bartender gave them a table as I put away the polishing stuff and went to greet them. And then I saw. The eight top was an Indian family. This was not at all unusual. The area of OC this restaurant was located in is heavily populated by several neighborhoods of different minorities, several of which were Indian. I had no issues waiting on anyone, I think servers who engage in profiling are just negative people and generally assholes, however, it cannot be denied that Indian culture eats very late at night and is known for making meals a social event. A lot of Indian families like to eat at this particular restaurant because we had several vegetarian options, which is popular in the culture. Sometimes things went smoothly and sometimes they, well, didn't. Inwardly I sighed because I knew I was going to be there for a while, but I was at least going to double my sales. And since it was an eight top, 20% included gratuity was guaranteed. With the knowledge that I was at least going to be able to put gas in my car that week, I approached the table with a new spring in my step and introduced myself. Hi, I'm Super Rad Ninja. I'm going to be taking care of you guys tonight. Can I get you started with something from the bar, or perhaps a mango iced tea or a soft drink? Literally eight pairs of eyes just staring at me in response. Not a word was said, just a solid five to ten seconds of scrutiny by the whole party. Finally, the gentleman sitting at the very head of the table said, in heavily accented, but perfectly understandable English, We would like eight glasses of water. I am the only person who speaks English. Speak only to me. Please do not disturb our party until we notify you. He did not seem to be trying to be mean, more like he was giving an instruction. I felt perhaps this was part of his custom, I wasn't sure. I came back with waters and baskets of bread, then went to the bar to wait to be notified. 
Half an hour later, I was beckoned by the same man at the table, who proceeded to order an outrageous amount of food. If I recall correctly, it was six pizzas, at least five appetizers, and two or three pasta dishes, as well as salads for everyone. I repeated the order back to him, he agreed that was correct, and then the part I had been dreading. At this particular restaurant, it was policy to verbally inform that a minimum gratuity would be included. Servers previously had downplayed that, in an effort to collect additional gratuity from unassuming guests. Several complaints had been received after people re-examined their receipts. It always made me uncomfortable to say it, but I was compelled. Yes, sir, I will get all that food going for you. And just so you are aware, since you are a party of eight, a minimum gratuity is automatically added to your bill. Then the unthinkable happened. This guy looked at me, processed what I had just said, and turned to one of the other men at the table and said something in a different language. They had a quick conversation. And then the other guy got up and went to the bar and sat down. The head dude looked back at me and said, with finality, We are now seven, and made a dismissive gesture with his hand. I was totally floored. I had thought I had seen it all, but food service will always give you a new experience. I put in their massive order and actually heard the back of the house staff groan when the printer in the kitchen spat out a ticket. The guy at the bar ordered something by pointing at the pictures. When his food came up, he predictably carried it over to the table and ate with his group. The rest of the service was relatively uneventful. The bartender transferred the lone diner's check to me and went home. The kitchen staff finished their side work and went home, and it was just me and the manager sitting at the bar watching these people hang out. Occasionally I was summoned to clear dishes or refill water for three hours. My manager finally told them that they had to leave because I was approaching eight hours on the clock and was required to clock out, and after that there wouldn't be anyone to serve them. This was just before 1 a.m. They had arrived a few minutes before 9 p.m. They reluctantly paid and left. I'm sure you don't need to ask if I got tipped. 4. This was a few years back. I was 20 with $10 in my bank account. All my money was going to school bills and I was working two jobs. One as a bartender at a nice hotel and another as a server at an Italian restaurant and pizza joint. I hadn't had a meal that wasn't a single McDonald's dollar menu item in a week. McChickens have gotten me through some tough times. Anyway, a customer ordered spaghetti fra diavolo. He asked me if it was spicy. I told him yes. Our chef loved spicy and would always serve his fra diavolo a little spicier than people expected. I informed the man of this and he was all about it. I deliver the food. He takes one bite. He says, Two spicy, send it back. I want normal sauce. I don't have time to argue with him, so I grab the plate and head towards the kitchen. I feel eyes in the back of my head as my supervisor is following me to make sure the food is disposed of. Thank God for the full trash bag. I set the food down on the counter, take the trash out, wash my hands, and by the time I am back, my supervisor is busy helping the line. I quickly dump the food in a to-go box and hide it. I recovered it later, and yes, it was definitely spicy but it was also the first meal with real ingredients I'd had in a while. After that, I put a clean trash bag next to the exit, and would do the same process every time someone sent their food back. Usually three to five meals a week. I was eating like a king. Then one day the owner was in and caught me red-handed, looked me up and down, smiled, and didn't say a word. I felt ashamed. I felt that sinking, embarrassing stomach twist that could only come from being caught stealing food to feed oneself. I worked the rest of my shift and he did not mention it. On my way out the door without saying anything, I was handed a full large vegetable and chicken pizza, fresh out of the oven. I mean piping hot. I looked at the owner and he said simply, Quit eating the garbage food. Grilled chicken and vegetables on a pizza was never and never would be my first choice but I understood why he gave me that pizza after the first slice. I hadn't had vegetables in weeks. My body was worn and I was seriously lacking vitamins that 20-year-old me did not even notice until after. I have since gained a new taste and appreciation for onions and peppers. Every closing shift I worked, he would hand me a free pizza. If he wasn't there that night, the counter guy, his brother, would hand me a free pizza. And during the few lunch shifts I would cover, I would leave with a chicken parm sandwich and fries. The guy took care of me, seriously helped me get out of credit card debt and back on my feet, 
but never made me feel bad about it. He quietly fed me for a three to four month period without any questions or hesitations. With the school year approaching, I knew I wasn't going to be able to keep both of my jobs and elected to keep the bartending one since it would interfere less with my class schedule. When I told the owner I was having to quit, he told me I would always have a place to work at one of his restaurants. I'll never forget what he said. You got them big Italian balls, kid. You're a survivor. You don't break. Come back any time and I will have a job for you. I still go and visit him from time to time, but shortly after I left, his brother was arrested for bribing an immigration officer and the whole place was investigated for money laundering. Nothing came of it besides his brother doing a quick stint in prison and the whole town finding out that there were some very close ties to the Mafia. But hey, that's New Jersey for you. 5. Backstory I was working as a manager in a karaoke bar a number of years ago and had to deal with a number of weird or drunk people over the year I worked there. But this one took the cake. Or threw away the cake. Don't worry, you'll get it in the end. There were two parts to this bar, so we had the full bar on one side of the place, and the other was dedicated to private rooms. The age to go into the bar was 21, and all ages in the private rooms. We normally had kids' birthday parties in the private rooms, and nothing was new to us. We normally are pretty slow from the time we open at 12pm to about 6pm. After that, it could get crazy till we closed at 2am. This day found yours truly opening and closing, yes, it was slave labor. So this incident happened in the late afternoon or early evening. A kid's birthday party had checked in at around 4pm and was booked for 3 hours. The party consisted of about 10 kids under the age of 10 and 3 adults. Adults were the mom of the birthday kid, grandpa and grandma. They were from a Mediterranean country. I know this because I recognize the mom as the owner of a restaurant in downtown that I used to frequent. Place has bomb gyros. The grandpa was ordering drinks from the time he got there until they left. Cast. Group of kids. Didn't say anything, but were pretty good kids. Mom, nice lady. Grandpa, crazy one. Me, dum dum. Now the story. So this grandpa was drinking pretty steadily and finally ran out of cash and needed to start a bar tab on a credit card. About 7pm the party was done and the kids were packing up the room and were all getting ready to leave. Pretty respectful kids and well behaved too. The mom comes up to pay and I calculate the bill and give it to her. Turns out she was about $40 short. She turns to the grandpa and asks for some money. He replied that he didn't have any more. The following is the conversation that happened. Dad, can you give me $40 to cover the bill? I don't have any more cash. Dad, how much did you drink? You had money when we came. He was the one overcharging me on the drinks. What were you drinking? Turns to me. What did you serve him? Well, he had five Remy Martinis at $15 per that he paid for with cash. And he has a credit card on a tab with three more. Dad! Let's just go. What's he gonna do? Haul the cops over $40. <laughs> Yes, Dad, that's exactly what he can do. I've had enough of this, let's go. Sir, I can add what's missing from the room charge to your drink tab. No, you're gonna charge me with a tip too. I don't want to give you any more. We are leaving. Dad! You can leave, sir, but as you had to leave your credit card with me in order to open the tab, you'd be leaving without your card. Fine. Do that then, you thief. They finally pay and leave. If that was then the end of it, then it wouldn't make a very good story then. Ah. I have my guys go and clean the room after they left to make sure that everything is out, i.e. trash and all the like. One of the guys brings out about half a sheet of cake. I look at it in surprise. I tell them to leave it on the counter and maybe they'll come back for it later. Now we had a policy that if there are things left in the room, we will keep it for up to two hours. If it's perishable, it goes in the trash. If it's not, it gets put in the manager's office for up to 48 hours, then will be put into the trash. If it is valuable, then we will make an effort to locate and return. Fast forward 2 hours 9pm, the cake goes in the trash. Fast forward another hour 10pm, I'm sitting behind the front bar and counter and talking to a co-worker and a regular customer who was a good friend. The phone rings and I answer it. Thank you for calling, this is Dum Dum, how can I help you? 
We left an hour ago and I forgot our cake. Where is it? Cake? Hold on, sir, let me check. Did anyone leave a cake in the last hour? Nope, only cake was that one we tossed out already. Sir, we don't have any cakes that were left here from an hour ago. Are you calling the right place? Yes. I know it's the right place, because I'm calling the number on your receipt. The one you overcharged me on. Finally realizing who I'm talking to. Oh, okay, now I remember you. Sir, you left here about three hours ago. We have a policy where food is thrown out after two hours, if left in the room after you leave. I'm sorry, but we threw it out already. What? No, nobody throws away a perfectly good cake. You ate it. No, sir, we don't eat any of the leftover food from other people's parties. No, 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 you ate it. You all worked for the cake. Sir, please stop yelling. We didn't eat it. It's in the trash can over here. You can come down to verify it if you like. I'll save the trash for you. No, you ate it. You effing Chinese everything. <laughs> now to pause here to clarify some things. I am pure Japanese. The place I'm working in is owned by a Korean. Most of the staff is Korean. Okay, enough. Back to your regularly scheduled insane rant. Excuse me? Ah, you effing Chinese eat everything you effing Chinese have no class. Sir, please stop with the racial slurs and stuff. You Chinese eat cats, rats, and snakes, dogs, frogs. I'm thinking WTF. I know you ate the cake. You effing Chinese eat everything. Sir, your cake is in the trash. And for your information, I'm Japanese. We don't eat cats, rats, snakes, and dogs. We do, however, eat a lot of fish and rice. Goodbye. I slam the phone down and look up with hot eyes and my face red at my customer and co-worker. They are nowhere to be seen, but I can hear them laughing. I look over the bar counter and see them on the floor holding their stomachs and laughing and yelling fish and rice. I realize that it must have sounded effing insane, and then I start laughing till I was crying too. He never came back for his cake either. Hey everybody, Hellfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to Spinning Plates, number 69. Oh, not again. <sighs> okay, y'all done now? Right, here we go. Never can sold that joke. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. Seems to have gone mysteriously quiet. I'm not going to argue against it. All I get is occasional cars and horns in the distance. Not too bad. No barking dogs, no fireworks. Maybe it's raining outside, who knows. Not that that usually deters them, but I'll take the blessed silence. Uh, okay, streaming this weekend, uh, either Saturday or Sunday, not sure when. Uh, I'm getting a delivery today of, uh, what you call it, a sound bar. Should have got one years ago, but I uh, finally got around to getting a sound bar for my television. Uh, not the new TV, because I've not bought that yet, but if it's good, then that'll be the sound bar for the new television. If it's not, then when the old TV gets moved, that will get moved with into the new the new room, or the bedroom, where it's where it's going. Um, and I'll get a better one for that. But I think I'll be okay. So I'll be spending a little time setting that up, and playing around with the settings, and trying different things. It has a woofer. I'm assuming that doesn't mean it comes with a dog. Anyway, with that, I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening and take very good care of yourself.